Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and this is my video series on full stacked JavaScript web development. And in this uh, video series, I'm going to show you how to make a, a RESTful API using JavaScript. So, uh, uh, I'm a member of Free Code Camp. Uh, right now, I'm in Busan, South Korea, and uh, we got a really good, um, engaged, active community over here. Uh, I really love Free Code Camp. Um, I love the structure of their curriculum. And uh, if you're not familiar with Free Code Camp, I highly suggest that you create an account. It's it's free, as the name implies. And if you complete all of their uh, certifications, then you can build real projects for nonprofits. Um, you got to complete the front end certificate, the data visualization, the back end, and uh, and then um, and then once you do all three, then you can work on your full stack uh, certificate, which is where you make um, projects for nonprofits. Uh, I made a one video series uh, where I go over all of the uh, algorithm challenges, and uh, and I did another video series making one of the uh, intermediate. Uh, front-end development projects. Uh, for this video series, we're actually going to delve into the back-end. And uh, there's 10 projects that you have to do. There are uh, five dynamic web application projects, which require like everything. You, you need a database, you need a front-end library like Angular or React, and, and of course you need Node and Express. For um, for this video series, uh, I mean, I wanted to you know introduce my viewers to to um, you know, full stack development, but I wanted to do it, you know, uh, you know, very lightly. Take some gentle baby steps. So we're not going to do the uh, the dynamic projects. Uh, that might be for a future video series. But instead, I wanted to uh, show you how to do uh, uh, an API, a RESTful API. And uh, we're going to do the very first uh, project called the uh, Timestamp Microservice. So we'll click on that and we'll review. Uh, the user stories, um, and I'm going to blow this up for you so you can see that. Okay, all right. So you want to build a full stack JavaScript app that is functionally similar to this, and uh, I'll show you my example in just a moment. Uh, but this is my example. They have another one right here, uh, and it's telling you, okay, create a GitHub repository, and you have some user stories. Okay. Here are the three user stories. So as a user, I can pass a string as a parameter, and it will check to see whether that string contains a Unix timestamp or a natural language date. For example, January 1st, 2016. Okay, so um, what is a Unix timestamp? A Unix timestamp um, is basically um, the number of milliseconds um, uh, divided by a thousand. So in, in computer science, time is measured in milliseconds starting from January 1st, 1970. Um, don't ask me why, and this is kind of like a joke uh, among, you know, uh, nerds, but for, for some reason, uh, time in, in, the, in the computer world, time started uh, January 1st, 1970. And so we, we measure time in milliseconds uh, from that starting point, January 1st, 1970. So, um, uh, so Unix time is basically the milliseconds that we have uh, divided by a thousand. So uh, basically we're, we're converting milliseconds into seconds because, yeah, anyway, nah. All right, so uh, that's what we have to do. Another use of story, um, if, if we have an appropriate uh, you know, parameter, either Unix time or uh, natural language uh, date, um, then it's going to return both the Unix timestamp and the natural language form of that date. And, uh, and it's going to return this as JSON data, JSON data. And I'll talk to you about that in just a moment. And if it does not contain a date or a Unix timestamp, it returns null for both of those properties. Okay, so I'm going to show you my example here so you can uh, see what's going on. And uh, it, it's just a very simple UI. I got a, you know, some headers, some paragraph tags, and, and, I, and I give some examples for you, uh, to, uh, you know, example parameters so you can see what that looks like. So, so essentially, um, okay, what, what is JSON data? Well, if you watch my video series on the random quote machine, um, you notice that, uh, and you, you learned that, okay, we built the web page with HTML and CSS and Bootstrap. Uh, we, we 
we created two buttons there and, and we hooked those buttons up to some JavaScript. Uh, one of the buttons, when you clicked it, it would share a quotation uh, to Twitter. And the other button, when you clicked it, it would make an, a request, an Ajax request, to some URL. And this URL was the quote API from the Forismatic um, you know, website. And uh, when you visit it, this when you visit this particular URL or API endpoint as it's known, uh, it doesn't respond with you know HTML and CSS, you know, like a normal web page. Like if you go to a web page like uh, you know Google.com or FreeCodeCamp.com or or um, you know uh, Airbnb, whenever you go to those websites, um, it, it the response is you know images and text and you know uh, style sheets things like that a web page but not all addresses not all urls respond with those kinds of uh, files with that kind of data in the case of the random quote generator when we accessed that api and we made a request to it it responded with json data um, or json data and json j-s-o-n that stands for javascript object notation. And um, if you've done the intermediate uh, front-end projects, you, you have um, you know, a healthy dose of uh, JSON experience already. Um, you, you need it to access endpoints for the, the local weather and the, the random quote machine and, and you know, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, developers, you know, uh, we, we use APIs you know, all of the time, but how do you create an API? Like, like the people at Forestmatic who, who provided that API for our quote machine, well, how did they make that? And that, you know, Weather Underground or, you know, any of the other weather forecast websites that provide the API for our, you know, forecast projects, well, w we can use jQuery and make an Ajax request to that API, but, but how did they make that API? How can you take an incoming request and spit out a bunch of JSON data? Well, that's what this project is going to teach us, and we're going to build this project using Node.js and Express. And uh, for this project, you know, there's no need for a uh, front-end library. As you can see, it's you know, it's pretty basic right here. Uh, there's nothing going on, and there's no you know reason to use a, a database. We don't have to do that. So uh, let me sh let me just show you how it works. So the user story says um, we can pass in a parameter and uh, we can pass in um, a natural language date. So today is, what is today? August, uh, I think it's August 13th, 2016. And when I click enter, okay, I don't get a website. I get this stuff. This is JSON data. Okay, and I'm using, by the way, I'm using this uh, Chrome extension that makes JSON data like look really pretty. Um, and you know, if, if you don't have it on your uh, on your browser already installed, it's probably going to look like this. Um, you know, just kind of plain black text and not pretty printed uh, like like it is over here. Um, anyway, there's there's tons of you know extensions to pretty print this. Uh, I think I'm using um, uh, I'm not sure what I'm using, uh, but but anyway, there's tons of extension that do that do exactly the same thing. Uh, so I'm not returning a um, I'm not returning any, you know, web page information, no images. I'm returning JSON data. So there it is right there. And uh, if you, you know, if you wanted to access this and get information and make an Ajax request, I mean, I don't know why you would want to do that. It only returns a Unix timestamp and a natural uh, timestamp. But uh, but if you wanted to, you could absolutely do it by uh, by uh, ax, uh, by making a request to this URL. So uh, that was the natural language. Uh, let's go ahead and put in a Unix time zone. And uh, okay, you can see we get the same thing. Let me just change the Unix here. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll just make it a little different. Okay, so. Uh, uh, I, I changed the you know, changed this four to a two, and and apparently that brings us back uh, several years. Uh, if I go ahead and I if I do something else like like blah blah, okay, 
then it's going to return null, and that's one of the um, that's one of the user stories um, for uh, for this project. It has to accept a Unix time, natural date time, or if it doesn't, then uh, if it gets something else, then we have to return null for both of these properties. So uh, that is it. Uh, that is the um, that is what we're going to build in this uh, project. Uh, in the next video, uh, I'll teach you, you know, what you have to do to get set up, and then we'll start building it. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.